Welcome to the North Central Center for Rural Development's Heritage Tourism Series. This is the fifth of seven presentations, and we'll also be debuting a, a new web-based resource materials to help communities and organizations assess, plan for, develop, implement, and evaluate and sustain heritage tourism efforts. And uh, my name is Larry Dickerson. I'm a community development specialist with University of Missouri Extension, headquartered in Boone County. And welcome, Tony. Why don't you put up that you're from Alaska so folks know. Um, and I work in central Missouri region. Um, we are planning to have our website with the materials available toward the end of the month, uh, fair, fairly a short time since we're getting close to the end of the month. And if you want to leave your email uh, and note uh, announcement, we have an announcement that we'll send to you once it's up and ready to go. So you will get a direct announcement when the website is live. Um, we still are looking for individuals who would like to review part or all of our materials if you're interested. And also, we are um, also interested in having folks submit stuff to add in, in any of the seven modules that we have or to uh, stories that you want to tell, success stories about your communities. Or if you have educational materials you think would be useful to folks. We're using this as a... Uh, is a way for people to network and share what they're doing as well as uh, some educational materials. So um, if you want to go to the North Central uh, S Center for Regional Development, uh, North Central Regional Center for Rural Development, sorry Rosa, if you want to go to their website you can Google that and you can find the recordings of the previous four sites and information about the modules and the website. Um, I'm going to switch here for a minute and one of the things that that we wanted to share with you as we go through this series just sort of our definition or approach to heritage tourism and heritage tourism uh, for the heritage tourism initiative team encompasses elements of living culture history and natural history a place that communities value and, and want to steward for the future these elements are very specific to each community or the region, if you're working in a region, contribute to community pride, stability, growth, and economic development. We believe that the role of heritage and culture are especially critical in rural settings, which is what we have designed these uh, sessions for. Uh, today, uh, Francis Bogus, who is a member of our team, and Francis is from Des Moines, Iowa, is a principal of Francis O. Bogus and Associates, LLC, and he provides direction assistance for community planning development and has done a lot of work in heritage tourism. He has years of experience in broad-based community development at the local, state, and national level, uh, grant writing and management, board development, training, community visioning, fundraising, project implementation, and, and tourism development. Uh, from 2007 to 2011, Francis led the Iowa Great Places program, implementing community projects totaling more than $240 million, all focusing on tourism and heritage tourism. He's assisted many communities in gathering community leadership to enhance their communities by developing and implementing uh, comprehensive long-range plans, both overall for the community and in, in heritage tourism. Uh, Francis has degrees in political science and history from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and a law degree from University of San Francisco. And this, as I said, the fifth. The first one, we sort of gave you an overview of what is heritage tourism and, and the heritage tourism team and what we were doing. The second looked at is tourism a fit. The third is how do you initiate tourism in your community. The fourth was organizing. And today's is planning for heritage tourism. So, Francis, I'm going to turn it over to you and welcome to Francis Bogus talking about planning for heritage tourism today. Go ahead, Francis. Okay, Francis, we can't hear you, so I'm not sure if you're having a problem with your mic. Can you hear me now? There you go, Francis. You're on. So. We, all right. Thank you. Welcome. We've had some technical difficulties. And I, good afternoon to all those people across the Midwest and all the way from Alaska, Florida, Maine, and Oklahoma. Thank you for participating. This uh, 
session module today is our fifth session how to develop a strategic plan for your community it's all about uh, developing a heritage tourism efforts and that's what we're focusing on many communities are able to develop community plans but this uh, planning module that we develop with the north central states and with the land grants universities is focusing on heritage tourism the model and strategic plan can be used for community development and heritage tourism because they're interchangeable purpose of today's session is to get us to have doable action plans and this module will focus on creating those plans that all the community can support and build on partnerships and community assets that are available its purpose is to make the important aspects of your community protect and to save the best parts and those parts that you want to change you go ahead and make changes remember a good plan is essential for success in sharing plans that have worked well and provided guidance to your heritage tourism efforts is encouraged and during this uh, module in this webinar I'm going to refer to uh, different examples of case studies that I've worked on in the Iowa Great Places programs when I uh, headed up that program for four years in Iowa the Iowa Great Places was a community and development uh, and cultural development program that focused on all Iowa communities and making them better places and more attractive communities and heritage tourism was part of a major component for virtually all of the communities that were involved in the program there were 28 during the length of the program so let's start now with uh, insights on how to proceed with strategic planning the first question you're probably asking is why plan well as you know if you don't have a plan you do have a plan in fact it's a bad plan and we want to communities to be successful and they should have good plans to be successful and why you should plan well first uh, you need to have a guide to the future of what you want every person uh, in every community needs a guide on how to, uh, to move about to making the change and a strategic plan is very important to what where you're going to go in heritage tourism it's very important to how what you want the future to look like you need to find a way to to obtain that future and the reason is you have to state reasons why the community wants to develop her heritage tourism as a major component of their community development you need to be transparent all the people need to come together and share their agendas and their hopes and futures and where they want the community to go and you have to have a way just like you just don't get in your car and uh, just drive and hope you find the destination for uh, three or four hundred miles away you have to have a way to get your to your preferred condition and the community wants to decide where they want to go in heritage tourism we've defined heritage tourism in the past and we will continue uh, to use that term is what the assets of your community are and what you want to develop in your community to make it more attractive to outsiders and also build up the spirit decor within the members of the community themselves so you want to develop a roadmap for the future and your future is you need to develop a mission that is what you want your community to look like and down the road whether that be three four or five years and it also when you're coming to the table with various different groups and Larry covered this in organizing and developing partnerships in the last week's module you want to decide what is good to keep and what is needs to be changed it's very important to reach that and when we're moving forward and the communities need to understand that when you're taking stock you have to understand what is your capacity certain communities are able to achieve uh, certain things uh, not we don't have mountains or beaches here in the Midwest but we do have lakes and streams and we do have parks and trails and a lot of other amenities you take advantage of what you have you can't expect to have a mile long white sandy beach in your community we can have a lake and you can have a small beach for wading into the lake you can have a infrastructure and build on different types of equipment to make enhance the lake there's numerous examples one of the uh, smallest counties in Iowa Adams County which has less than 5,000 uh, population one of their projects when they first started was to enhance their uh, existing lake that the state lake one of the ways they enhanced that they developed a project to add more playground equipment at the beach that was at the lake but they also added a number of different cabins and they built uh, 
eight cabins as one of their projects that would allow more visitors and tourists to come down to visit that lake and they could stay overnight, something that did not exist uh, prior to them developing their Great Places project. In understanding your capacity and resources, obviously you need to know what you can do in the community. Some uh, communities have a, a lot more resources than others. Some are built uh, near lakes, some are built near rivers, and there are some communities that are built and develop on either lakes or rivers, but they do have other assets and they have trails and parks and heritage houses. If you have to look into your community and find out what your assets are and we it's thinking that is the best way to develop your heritage tourism. And the method, what is the method you want to create ownership? The purpose of having a method in heritage tourism is to create ownership and buy-in from your stakeholders. That is all those interested parties who are most affected by your heritage tourism plan and they live in the community. When you think about what you're moving to, what are the components of heritage tourism? Well, let's first start off, I think, most importantly, is your mission. What is your reason for being? And also your mission is how you will move forward. So I think it's all vital when you're developing heritage tourism and planning for it. The community has to decide, and that is taking the steps that Larry uh, mentioned in organizing for community development last week and moving forward is how are you going to move forward and there that is your second step is vision that is your dream what do you want your community to look like in three to five years down the road what is the desired condition that after all the changes you make what's your ideal dream for your community look like that means a place where people can visit uh, the Main Street commercial. They may want to visit a museum that are in town or a heritage houses in town. They may want to visit a restored theater. One of the uh, communities in Adams County, beside developing the enhanced uh, park that it allowed for campovers and uh, enhancing uh, building a pier for fishing, uh, in the middle of town, they uh, decided to develop. Uh, and restore an old opera house and that would be used for community theater and meeting places and social gatherings. But as I will discuss later on in this uh, presentation during the webinar, that was a project that took the longest because it was a bigger project. Renovating an old museum uh, is a uh, six-figure high six-figure investment as opposed to building small cabins for overnight stays during most of the year is a much smaller investment as I will discuss later is sometimes you need to have your small successes first and what is the uh, analysis of your current situation what that really means is what's really happening in the community now you need to take a look at that and I'll talk about the SWOT analysis later on in this presentation but you have to decide is where your community a realistic look at your community and what it is right now and then you have to decide where do you want to go and when you're thinking about where to go you have to set goals and goals means your objectives your activities what you want to do to achieve and we'll talk about how many to set later on in this presentation and your strategies is the way you're going about implementation of your plan how to do it and that is uh, will be covered as part of the planning that a community needs to uh, move forward is a strategies for making development and heritage tourism. As I said, uh, the final things you need to take a look at in your heritage tourism uh, components are what tools will you need. If you need outside people uh, to come in and do act as facilitator, then uh, there are plenty of consultants or extension individuals to access for that. If you have uh, local resources for uh, finances, you want to tap into those first. You also look at uh, finances resources outside your community but you also look at some of the uh, individuals who have uh, tools and background experience if you have someone who's uh, worked in historic preservation in your community they would be a good source of information and technology for those who are IT I like when working with communities try to get people who are good at something to do the same thing in heritage tourism and community planning I think it uh, brings out the best in people it also gets them more in people involved you let the IT person do the IT work you let someone an educator who has a uh, knack for understanding uh, 
history and uh, sociology to be participant of the team building for on your museums. And your action plans, what are your specific steps that need to be taken in developing your heritage tourism? What I say by an action plan, that is specific steps by uh, within a specific time by specific persons have to achieve it. Therefore, you uh, actually a lot responsibility and the persons are answerable for what they do, but you also see the steps uh, set out and what has to be achieved over a certain timeline. Timelines always have to be set because a lot of people, if not given timelines, will procrastinate. And also evaluation is a very vital component. You have to decide what you, at the end, whether you achieve what you set out to be. Sometimes there may be obstacles that are beyond the community's control that they cannot overcome. But the most important thing is, remember, are they making progress? Sometimes progress would be slow, sometimes it would be on schedule, and sometimes it may be even ahead of schedule. But you want to set measurables right up front so therefore you can evaluate them at a specific time later in the, when you're moving down the road to an increased and enhanced and heritage tourism to look back and see if you've reached your measurables. And also, finally, components, enjoy your uh, accomplishments celebrate your successes, publicize them. That's very important to communities and that's what I'm talking about uh, previously and also moving forward is that you need to talk about making improvements and letting the whole world, especially your local community, know what you've achieved. And the action planning is very important, I think, is to specifically decide how you're going to uh, set these projects in motion. What I think you need to analyze the tasks that will be involved in making a change. Once a community comes together and decide they want to increase the heritage tourism in it, that it is a good fit for the community, they have to decide what are the components to reach to improve each of the projects and you set forth those tasks. And then you, the next step would be to identify and acquiring the resources to achieve those tasks. If you need to uh, develop a and restore an old movie theater and you want to show movies, you need to talk about the physical infrastructure. It has to be uh, changed both interior and exterior. And you also have to look at the type of equipment you want to bring in. You want to be talk about whether it's feasible to actually maybe show 3D movies, which also has uh, additional expenses. You may, a community may be able to afford those additional expenses, but you may not be able to do that. You may not be able to show uh, 3D movies, but you can show current movies and still have a viable and an alternative to the movie theaters, which are simply out on the edges of town, which are simply boxes. There's nothing like sitting in a nice theater that's been restored with a uh, beautiful art deco interior that get, makes the movie going experience very enjoyable. Also, is talking about resources. Certain, some communities can uh, understand what the resources they have and they know what to do, achieve. Uh, there's a community I work with on the Mississippi River, Guttenberg. Uh, when a consultant uh, went to visit with uh, them when they started the community planning, he proposed that they should be developing uh, their bike trails and connecting them to state parks. Well, the people in the community uh, thought that was uh, beyond what they could actually achieve. They're a small community of under 3,000. What they wanted to focus on was that they were an asset and they had access to the Mississippi River and then the traffic going up and down. So they wanted to focus only on developing a marina to enhance the number of boats stopping in the town. The town is a German heritage that has a lot of older buildings and, and a main street that sits right facing the Mississippi River. So they wanted to develop a, a marina so and have slips for the uh, boats to come in and stop. Also developed a place, a refreshment stand that'd be open during seasonal hours and also uh, restrooms and picnicking area for boat traffic. And that is not the the freighter traffic, but the uh, recreational boats that go up and down the Mississippi River. That's, a, a, to me, a perfect example of a community that understood what their resources. They could not develop trails and a marine at the same time. The community as a whole came together and decided that the marina and 
development was their number one priority and they would focus on that and enhance that and they have enhanced tourism since then. The next step of your action plan, identifying your staff and volunteers who are going to be needed to complete the activities. As I said, you need to line up people who are uh, good at what they do. It's always good to have good uh, contacts and getting uh, contractors and architects as part of your committee because sometimes you can get them to donate in-kind services in lieu of cash. And sometimes you, when you cannot reach cash from some of your uh, in-town community, you can also get in-kind services instead. And that's very important. And it's also I think it's vitally important to have a, a banker or a finance person on your committee because they bankers know where the money is in the community. They can enhance those and reach out to those people who may not be part uh, typical joiners of certain types of uh, groups such as environmental groups or heritage groups or museum groups, but they will be people who have uh, access to capital, which is very important to achieving enhanced heritage tourism. And also evaluations, I've said, you need to determine what your measurable goals are and whether they have achieved, and you need to be doing that on an, uh, at least a quarterly basis to see what's been accomplished. And I said, also, as part of the evaluation, you have to have a time set timeline for your accomplishments to determine whether your uh, tasks have been accomplished within a time frame you set off in the beginning. Now there are times I understand when there may be increased delays and that happens frequently when you're doing outdoor uh, projects for heritage tourism or community development. At that time you simply have to reevaluate and set new timelines if that's necessary. Reevaluating, being flexible and adjusting to changing circumstances is an enhanced part and vital part, I believe, of heritage tourism. We've also developed as part of this uh, project is an action planning form and I think it should be used for each and every project that you develop because you need to have a per certain person or persons dedicated who is a keeper of these records. And this is a, a tool that should be used for each project that you develop. It's a reminder, an outline, a place to review your accomplishments. And you set your timelines, you set what you're going to do, you set your resources needed, what your resources are available, and what you may need from outside of your community to enhance your heritage tourism. And what are the gaps that may be filled in and date completion dates. Now obviously these can also be changed as you move along depending on the circumstances both internally and externally in the community. But once you have that action plan you're following it, it's just like a road map. If you think you're going to get take a wrong turn, you can go back to your road map and say we need to make a left instead of making a right. And I think it's a good guide to have with you when you're focusing on where you're going and what you're going to accomplish in implementing heritage tourism. Strategic planning, what we like to do is the capacity approach and that is building on what is good. Frequently you've heard a lot of groups uh, now talk about capacity building. They say a community should not focus on your weaknesses but focus on strengths and you've also heard human resources people say the same thing. It's not uh, focusing on your weaknesses, you have difficulty getting started as an individual and the same thing applies to a community who's thinking about expanding and enhancing their heritage tourism. You want to focus on what your assets are. You address what is good about your community and you frequently, what I've seen in communities addressing what is good, they things that such are weaknesses such as maybe a lack of uh, tourists visiting the community will actually increase and improve. I've noticed that frequently uh, many communities, uh, the appearance of the communities will uh, in, be improved physically because they're focusing on what's good about the community and then you'll take and get buy-in from community members at large to take community pride, civic pride in their community and that helps the physical appearance of people wanting to come and visit the community. Community pride is a lot, is, is a very important. There are many reasons why people uh, want to make changes for their community, community tourism. 
and heritage tourism. It could be economic development. It could be retailers wanting more people to come in. It's wanting to increase the population base so you have a wider demographic groups and more younger people. Uh, realtors wanting to uh, sell more homes, increase property values for owners. School districts wanting increased students. And just uh, restaurants and bars wanting enhanced people to come in and doing trade in their businesses. All right, building on what is good. Look at your dreams and where you want to go, I think is, uh, as I said, part of the capacity approach. Look at where your starting place and where you're going to get to. If you have a large or lack of heritage tourism existing, you have a long ways to go. You have to know that sometimes it'll take uh, a lot of small steps to achieve uh, one big step. But know how to get from where you are in the present to moving off in the future is vital that everyone understands as it comes together in organizing and planning for heritage tourism and also keeping as what is uh, important in, in the community. A lot of the historic preservation people like to keep what is uh, older buildings and they don't like them to be torn down and there's a, a large community uh, effort in most of the communities to achieve that and uh, uh, Adams County was one community that uh, has a very enhanced heritage tourism. They have a very uh, nice, attractive main street that's mostly filled, but they wanted to fill in the gaps. And the gaps were uh, that opera house that they wanted to restore, and they built it from scratch, including putting an elevator in to the second level, the balcony level, to have an increased attendance. And they also wanted to look at their outside the community into the uh, lakes and the trails and outside the main street of commercial district to have a total experience for when people did come to visit the community they would see uh, the community commercially downtown visit that but they could also go out to a lake and fish and swim and simply relax by water and trees so they were looking at to enhance the entire her heritage tourism prospects and the experience. Remember, people come for the experience and memories. They'll take those memories indelibly printed in their mind back to the, uh, their homes and they'll also take photographs. So they want to take photographs of both uh, uh, city life that is for a small town and out in the rural, out in the country life. So you can have both. So, uh, there's other communities. Um, one is the uh, community I work with up in El Cater, which is in northeast Iowa. That is uh, a community uh, has the assets of a very attractive commercial district, but they also wanted to connect themselves to two other towns that were within four miles. So they want, and they were connected by a river, so they wanted both uh, the river trail and the river for boating and kayaking to be enhanced. The, uh, El Cater does not need a lot of work within the, the city center itself, but they did want to enhance those both water and land trails. So that's what they worked on also to enhance the physical infrastructure of the two other smaller communities that are, are nearby and connecting them so therefore people can have an experience of uh, taking in three towns in over a day so therefore you're extending the commercial experience and the heritage tourism experience beyond the one local community remember tourists like to come not just to one place they like to explore they like a day or two or three outings. Remember, we're dealing with smaller rural communities in the Midwest. Uh, two or three day experience is what all most you can ask for, but having experiences of having places to shop, places to eat, and places to have fun are vitally important. And also looking at your local resources. What you can ask for in your heritage tourism community is to build on the positive of what you have. Favors exercise is one way to look at what you want to need to preserve is and what you need to change. If if when you're pulling all these various groups together and having meetings, what I think you need to do and what will be discussed in later modules is an inventory of assets. That is favorite things that people like to do, places they like to go, and reasons they like to live here. When you have that and have the consensus about what you like to do, that is attractions, you will start thinking about these are the things that need to be uh, kept, these are the things that need to be exposed and publicized to outsiders so therefore 
if you, members of the local community like to do them, that they might be interesting to visitors who are seeking a greater heritage tourism experience. Remember, attractions are about interesting people, places, and things. And it's important to keep an institutional memory of those people who lived in the community for a long time. What are the interesting places, people, and things that you will like to see and that other people might like to share? Uh, I go back to my sample of Adams County. One of the things they had to do, they had the Johnny Carson uh, birthplace home. And so they uh, have developed that. They've also developed the French Icarian uh, village, which was a uh, utopian village outside of town. They're restoring that. So they're looking at various aspects of the community to enhance the tourism experience. Now, those who want to look for an utopian, utopian village and those who want to see Johnny Carson's birthplace may not be the same people. But remember, when you have families coming to visit for heritage tourism or couples, you'll have people with various interests and they want to see as many different types of experiences in a local community as possible. So you simply don't focus on only on your downtown. You want to go beyond your downtown and focus on your entire area. Keep that in mind when you're drawing up your vision. Now, and what is visioning? Well, I like to work and I think most communities can get their hands around visioning what you dream, perfect place once you've achieved what you've wanted what you want it to look like in five years. Five years is a doable goal because a lot of things can be achieved in five years and people can get their hands around the five year mark. I think that uh, goals, visioning beyond five years is very difficult. 10 and 20 year plans are simply too far out to people to get their hands around and for communities to get their hands around for that matter. What are the characteristics that you want for your vision? What characteristics of your community that you want in heritage tourism that you want to plan for? Do you want to have uh, a trails that lead in and out of town that people can spend uh, two, three hours on? Do you want places where they can shop, places where they can buy uh, handcrafted goods that are not available elsewhere, places where they can stop and rest along the way? And also, don't ever forget, you have to have adequate facilities for people to use. People like to remember if you're, you're enhancing your inheritance tourism, you have to decide who your market is and who you, and how you're going to go about that. And if you're having older people, you need places for them to have rest. So the trails need to have places for older people to sit down. If you're focusing on children and certain types of attractions that you need for activities for children to be doing and playgrounds are all an imaginative different type of innovative and creative playground equipment that you can put into a park that can enhance the appeal. Uh, what does it look like? What do you want your community to look like in five years? Think about that and you'll get some very interesting comments. And one another important factor to remember when you're uh, visioning is organize your uh, common groups into common and similar interests. You'll find there's a lot of overlap. You build more synergy that way and you will also be specifically getting people excited about what they want to do. Uh, the community of Fairfield is an interesting community in um, southeastern Iowa I worked with. It has a, a lot of uh, typical uh, agriculture heritage community but it also has a community of people recently who've moved in who are followers of transcendental meditation and what they have developed in Fairfield was those uh, a lot of those uh, different people came together and they had a lot of common interests and one of the things they built in Fairfield they built a park that the uh, with a lot of different sculptures that the transcendental meditation people liked but they also got the transcendental meditation people excited about building uh, an uh, restoring an old dairy barn that's on the outside skirts of town and adjacent to that they put in the visitor center in which they had an old schoolhouse move out to the edge of town right next to the new inter uh, exchange of highways that made it convenient for people to stop and learn about what was available in Fairfield traveling along the uh, state highway that was uh, expanded to four lanes and divided highway and right next to that was an uh, old barn that uh, that was used an old dairy barn that was uh, actually a round barn so therefore they had an old building they adaptive reuse 
they put it next to a restored dairy barn and it also had connecting trails around the entire community and they it's an eight mile trail that has, system that's been connected to the community that's been an enhancement in which the traditional agricultural and the main street uh, chamber of commerce people are excited about the transcendental meditation people are also excited about it so in some ways it's building a consensus it's giving a little bit of everything to everyone who wants to participate it gets people into exciting out of their silos into communicating and working with each other I think it's vitally important it builds community spirit you'll have that and I think it also develops this values of core values and what are the core values that is uh, getting a list of what you want the most important part of uh, assets communities what I found in uh, my experience with Iowa communities and I think it's that can be uh, replicated in other communities whether in the Midwest or across the country is this people want to have an enhanced tourism experience they, they go beyond simply the Disneyland Florida California New York City experience if they are coming out to the Midwest to visit or they're visiting relatives or for business they want to have things to do which are authentic to your locale looking around your locale there can be a heritage uh, someone a great person may have been born there and their house house is still in uh, decent shape that can be restored you can have uh, musical experiences you can have theaters experience well in El Cater, Iowa has a have they already had developed their opera house and has a fairly significant uh, visitors and attractions and entertainment both professional and community theater at the restored opera house there's a cultural element there but there's also a retail element element in which people can visit the opera house but also have uh, restaurants including uh, Al, Al Qaeda, a community of only 2,500, has a, a French Algerian restaurant that's been touted in Midwest Magazine and, and AAA Magazine as a four star restaurant. You wouldn't think you would find that in a community of 2,500, but they are enthusiastic about keeping their small town Midwestern appeal, but they're also adding things unusually not found in small midwestern towns you expect them maybe only find diners and fast food restaurants but to have that type of experience a white tablecloth restaurant with a full bar is something that gets people excited and going to an opera house and looking at what the strengths are that is your heritage your restored buildings and places the things and do gets people excited and will build and your heritage tourism and what is this uh, transitioning to action once you've decided about what your projects and you have your tasks built and your action plans what is the uh, you're moving from from your your desired condition you want to get to start it and everyone wants to start but where do you start when you have uh, say uh, half a dozen to a dozen different ideas and projects what I think is uh, do the best way to do is to go step by step you uh, decide priorities what are the most doable it could be done what can be done within one year two years and three years in small communities you frequently have competing uh, attention span and resources if a uh, community is having a bond issue and building a new school uh, in one year you don't want to have another development project competing with that so sometimes you'd have to plan for your entire community to decide and make decisions about when's the best time to start seeking uh, resources making changes what we're looking for I think the 12 month goal what do you want to accomplish in 12 months from the time you start and if you set that that out you can create doable steps and what issues need to be addressed well I say you need to go step by step in deciding how you want to set up your priorities you want to select a few projects to uh, start off with I think uh, three to four is for small communities uh, something that can be achieved in uh, the five-year visioning span always remember com communities do your small successes first don't try to do a big project as your first project because that is where a lot of communities fail to 
plan sufficiently. Remember, in when you're building heritage tourism, build on your small success because the negative people want to focus on failures. If you start building small successes, that's the first you will get people in the community excited and this will be proof that a community pulling together from disparate elements of the community and interest groups can achieve measurable successes. And in going into that further, I think that selecting your easier projects first is for achievement or if they're ready is the best way to build on success. Uh, going back to uh, Corning and Adams County, their uh, small successes first were building the cabins on next to the lake and then also uh, working on a art uh, center in the middle of town which they restored and had a, a community art gallery that was small successes they could start off with the bigger six uh, project the restoration of the opera house was a longer term project and that's the one that's just opening this uh, month in Corning and that was a uh, almost a million dollar project obviously to and it had been in inoperable for years so it's good to start off with your small projects first getting them moving ahead you show success that way but also at the same time it's good to think big and I th think that heritage tourism just like community planning you have a five-year plan to start off with you plan and announce the plan to everyone and you have those small successes building on to the bigger goals. Remember, think big, think and creative because big projects can increase and attract more dollars and more interest, but you also want to build toward those big projects and so you develop them over time. Uh, action plan, as I said, making your priorities, uh, setting those out first and making your organizations uh, responsible and the persons and finding those uh, action planning sheets where I recommend and, and doing a map of your assets and community. A good way to actually do a physical map of assets in your community so therefore you know where all your assets are and, and it's better that you can actually connect one asset to another. And I always recommend for any community moving forward is two ways of uh, doing an environmental scanning of your communities. One is a help hindrance exercise in which you simply get the committee together and draw a line what's helping the community and what's hindering the community moving forward. But my preference is the SWOT analysis in which you focus on your strengths of the community, your weaknesses, and your opportunities and your threats. And don't be afraid to ask for outside help. I think a person coming from outside the community gives a proper perspective. They don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. I think uh, an outside person who's not connected to any group is who's professional and who has experience working communities can be an asset to pulling, do a, a true strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis of what you want to move forward. And look at what your internal and your external uh, threats and opportunities. You have certain control over certain objects conditions in your communities and certain things you don't. In areas tourism implementation takes, as I said, taking down your tasks and breaking them down for each uh, project and the person responsible in the timeline to be achieved. Uh, always list all your resources at the very beginnings, what you will need to do to achieve your task in heritage tourism. Look at it as one way to, as a toolbox, what tools do you need to take out to install, say, a commode in your restroom or your bathroom. Look at as your resources is that way. What do you, assets and capacity do you have to achieve your enhanced uh, heritage tourism? Also, recruit as many uh, community members and get them excited, but get a broad cross section of the community. You'll find out over time you'll get two to three people who are really excited about the uh, community. Uh, planning and heritage tourism, enhancing and heritage tourism for the community, let those people go and participate and recruit other members. Enthusiasm is contagious. Let them be brought in. And, and leadership will come to, to a head and they'll take charge and help the community move forward to enhanced 
tourism attraction. I always set monthly meetings. That's one way to uh, measure progress. And it's always good to keep them standard uh, dates and times. Therefore, you have people reporting. I like to do is get communities from the heritage tourism houses, the museums, the parks, the trails, the environment, downtown people, the chamber people, uh, uh, all different types of service organizations. They send representatives to the major ad hoc organization that's uh, enhancing uh, heritage tourism and uh, reporting back to their organizations. But they, if you do that on a regular basis, then people are in the know what's going on. They don't think just a few select people are just trying to steer the community down to heritage tourism without taking uh, note of what all the affected people are likely to do in heritage tourism. Also, it's very transparent. I think transparency works well in heritage tourism because it keeps everyone in the community knowing what everyone else is doing in small towns it's, uh, that both works to your advantage and can be a disadvantage. Also celebrating a success, publicize your accomplishments and also decide like anything else, what's next? Uh, in heritage tourism and revisiting and reinvigorating the vision, you have to remember that constantly you have to sometimes on an annual basis revisit your vision. Do you still want to, uh, your community to look like uh, what you dreamed of in 2011 that when you're in 2013 uh, sometimes things change as you know uh, the domino effect takes place and once uh, one item or two items are changed community changes you have to decide whether you still want to go in that direction remember that uh, once you reach your goals or you may not reach your goals when you want to then reevaluate and set new timelines and new priorities as you move along Re Prioritizing is important. You want to look at what's changed and has the landscape for community changed and what needs to be readjusted. Also, like anything else, communities and heritage tourism changes. If you have inherent, enhanced heritage tourism, you may get visitors, but are they, you want to ask yourself after a year or two, are these the right type of visitors you want to keep? Uh, many communities uh, want young people and they will also be other communities that want an older population. So sometimes you just have to reevaluate and readjust what you're doing. Strategic planning considerations. Uh, I think uh, most communities I work with know what type of uh, considerations. You have to remember that heritage tourism and planning for it is a forever process. It always needs changing and things will change whether you like it or not. It's an organic. Think of heritage tourism as living organisms. There's always going to be new conditions and you'll have to address these new conditions as they appear. You also want to think of what is doable in your community. The uh, One of the uh, communities I work with was the Danish villages and that's uh, uh, west of Des Moines. There are two communities uh, over there they have a strong Danish influence and they have a, uh, actually the National Danish Museum for United States is a, in Elk Horn, Iowa. And that uh, museum exists, but they also wanted to add trails to it. So they're looking for people who want to connect to their Danish heritage. But they had a idea to add an amphitheater outside, so therefore they could do events on an outside basis and also connecting trails. The uh, Danish museum is approximately a mile outside of Elkhart and so what they wanted to do was to connect a, a, a physical trail so people could walk to and from the commercial district down to the uh, Danish villages but also developing sculptures along the way and one of the sculptures uh, they plan are having the uh, from Hans Christian Andersen from his fairy tales having sculptures to view along the way. Remember that's enhancing the experience to increase visitors. They have the type of visitor they want but they want to enhance the experience of those who are there. Remember uh, all these uh, strategic plans create action. They also are inclusive, they're participatory, but also creates passion. You build on your small successes and as I said, the heritage tourism plans both the adaptable for heritage tourism and community planning. And planning for heritage tourism is a process that but you need to continually ask these questions. And the what is what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to expect? What are you really 
are your real expectations for the community and why you keep asking are the reasons clear and transparent of why you want to enhance your uh, heritage tourism I think that needs to be an ongoing question the community needs to ask themselves and who needs to be involved well you have to remember all the stakeholders and interested parties and those affected by heritage tourism need to constantly be involved and understanding uh, the planning process is you may have to remember that transparency to achieve that you have to be adhering to the process that trust and mutual respect and collaboration are necessary elements and a good hearing process requires and achieves certain types of activities and solutions to community you want to attract the right type of visitors to your community you want enhancing your services and your products and your infrastructure infrastructure is important because I think it's uh, vital to what the uh, uh, progressive community wants to enhance the heritage tourism needs to achieve and also it maximizes jobs and opportunities and increased revenues for the all the retail and wholesale and also the nonprofits nonprofits also depend on revenue and whether it's a, a, a park or a theater or an art gallery they want to have more people attending spending more money so revenue does matter but also uh, you want to ensure that your tourism is sustainable both from the community social and cultural aspects and you also want to maintain your environment so in conclusion and I'll turn it over to Larry after this uh, final statement I think you all communities in planning for heritage tourism want to ensure efficient effective use of the resources okay. and funds Thank you, Francis. Larry and I'll turn it over I'm going to do is I'll put a uh, survey there that you can uh, evaluation survey that I hope everyone will fill out and uh, and Rose is adjusting it for me thank you that Rose will fill out and so we can see uh, uh, how you enjoyed this see other things I want to uh, mention on the slide that uh, showed the action planning form that some of you are interested in. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a change at the bottom. The, the It's not building a healthy community, it's creating a healthy community a handbook and actually uh, it's gonna be available in the next couple of weeks. Tony can let me know. It's a book that met, several of us uh, have worked on and that's where the form at. But I can also send you that form uh, individually it's it's one that I've used for for many years um, now comments or questions please we we can stay a little bit longer Rosa has told me so if you have some questions or comments or stories you want to tell us please put them in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer them for you and, and while you're doing that remember that you can go to the North Central Center for our Central Regional Center for Rural Development website, and you can get uh, all of the five now are recorded. So you can uh, go in and listen in to those, and our PowerPoints are also. Uh, yes, the slides, the PowerPoints are on the uh, on the North Central Center website. Larry, I think we have a question uh, from uh, Charlotte County about uh, advice on land acquisitions. I uh, one of the uh, best communities that I work with was uh, Fairfield. Uh, when they acquired their uh, looping trail around the entire community, it was eight miles. They had a, uh, developed a committee that was broad-based that represented both legal, financial, and uh, environmental and heritage people. And they would uh, go out as a team to the uh, prospective uh, landowners and talk about how the what the benefits were of acquiring the trail and having the trail connected around the entire community so therefore they would seeking out the uh, easements so therefore the, there would be some land taken out of, of agricultural production but the benefits were uh, explained to the community as a whole and that did basically assure those people that it was simply wasn't a land grab by some special interest it was something that would enhance the entire community and that and I think you need to plan that and do that in a transparent way and I th think transparency is very important when you're acquiring different land especially for enhanced trails Larry I'll turn it over to you okay. yeah thank you and, and um, a couple of the questions I've just changed from the uh, 
PowerPoint presentation to all modules recorded and posted online that's a PowerPoint you can see the uh, right here I don't Rosa if you can help me with the arrow uh, right right here is the website um, right there thank you so you can see nccrcd.msu.edu slash and so this right here is the website that you can get the recordings and the PowerPoints on. So thank you, Rosa. And they're all on there. Um, so, you know, we, we certainly are indebted to Rosa Solis and the North Central Rural Regional Center for Rural Development and their support of this. Uh, we got a grant from them and we, we've put a lot of our other time in, but we feel this is real important. And the North Central's uh, support not only in the dollars that we got to help bring us together, but the uh, <laughs> Rosa's help has just been, you know, invaluable in trying to create something. And hopefully, as I said, the website will be up fairly soon at the end of the month. And that's where we're going to have a lot of the resources that we put up here and a lot more. And hope you all will, uh, you know, contribute to us. Julie Avery, who also helps, is, is a co-PI with me and France is on the team. We're reviewing them just to make sure that they fit. But uh, we want your stories. We want your resources. Other comments or questions? And and I want to thank Francis because this was really a uh, excellent presentation today on on planning that covered both community planning and planning for heritage tourism. Um, other comments or questions? We can stay on a little bit after two if uh, you have other questions or things you want to ask. Okay. Well, seeing none, I would remind you that uh, next Thursday is our next webinar, and it will be. I'll I'll put the the sharing up there. The next webinar is next Thursday, October. Well, yeah, November 1, Implementing Heritage Tourism. And there's a lot of things in that module from uh, marketing to product development product to development. Uh, hospitality. There's just a variety of things in that module. So we hope that you will join us and also share your stories. Any other comments or questions before uh, we go? Just want to say thanks a lot for all those participating. I enjoy this, Larry. Hey. Thanks, everyone, and we hope to have you on next week. Next week.